Hello and welcome to another episode of the Common Man's Take on Sports with Kevin and Quentin. All right, let's uh, talk about some of the college football results from yesterday. I actually want to focus in on a few games. Let's start with the Penn State Illinois game. So that game was kind of tight in the first half, and then uh, Penn State started really pulling away there in the second half and started racking up some yards. But what's interesting to me is the total yards for Illinois. So Penn State was supposed to be a really good defensive team, but as I look at this, Illinois had 354 yards of offense. And Penn State had 383. Um, Illinois had 292 yards passing with a passing touchdown. And Penn State had 219 with a passing touchdown. Uh, and in rushing, Penn State had 164. And Illinois had 62. Penn State really got their rushing game going in the second half. Uh, unfortunately, Illinois had four interceptions and one lost fumble. So... That kind of caused them the game, but they were in it until they started making those mistakes. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> yeah, that is surprising. That's really surprising. I'm usually used to uh, Penn State having a good defense uh, with the way they played defense over the years. Uh, <clears throat> that's really surprising for me. I mean, they ended up winning the game 30-13 because they turned Illinois over uh, five times, four interceptions and one fumble. So but when they go to play teams like Michigan and Ohio State, they can't allow that many yards because Michigan or Ohio State probably aren't, aren't going to turn the ball over that much. Yeah. Because uh, those are the teams that you need to watch out for because they can, they can really play offense. Yeah, and uh, Penn State looked good, though, for the most part. So Then you have uh, Ohio State and Western Kentucky. Uh, it was kind of close there until about eight minutes left in the second quarter. And Ohio State racked up 21 straight points to go into the half. They ended up winning that game 63-10, to but I still have concerns with their offensive line, especially next week when they play Notre Dame. Oh uh, yeah, that's gonna um, that's, that's gonna, gonna be, be a good a, matchup. That's, yeah, that's cause uh, that's gonna show them that they that they can't hide anymore. That, cause they're gonna actually face uh, a really good team. I I will say before we go any further with some of these results, there were several teams that struggled this weekend. So they, I don't know what was going on with this weekend, but this was a weekend where a lot of the top teams struggled. Moving on from that Ohio State game, I, I will say there are one more thing though about the Ohio State uh, West Kentucky game. I, I still think Ohio State has some things to figure out. Uh, one in, in their running game, but two that offensive line. That offensive line um, still needs work. <coughs> they need to get better. Uh, their defense definitely needs to get better before they face somebody like uh, Michigan or Penn State because they allowed 204 passing yards to Western Kentucky with a passing touchdown. You don't want to do that when you're playing a team like Penn State or, or Michigan or you know even some of the other teams in the Big Ten. Well, so they, they want to be careful of that. Well, it's, well sometimes Western Kentucky can be a... Uh, uh, like a tough team sometimes in the seasons, but I gotta agree with you. They need to work on their defense. Ohio State needs to work on their defense because if they want to beat the Notre Dames, you know, uh, the uh, Michigans, the Penn States, they gotta get that defense going and they gotta get that offensive line uh, fixed, or else they're not gonna they're not gonna have a good season this year. Yep. So let's jump to the Georgia South Carolina game. This game 
really surprised me. Man. Oh, yes. Um, Georgia skated out of there with a win, but this is one of the first games that surprised me because Georgia was struggling some in that game. Yeah. It was really a close game until the uh, second half. Yeah, where Georgia was just... I mean, even then, like, Georgia only won by 10 points, 24-14, so it wasn't like they just took off in the second half. They really started grinding it out is what they did. They allowed 309 total yards from South Carolina, uh, which is not normal for a Georgia defense. Yes, yeah, that's, that's not normal. Usually, Five. Georgia defense will allow, like... Well, they, they, are, they allowed 5.3 yards per play, too, which is also not yeah. normal for a Georgia defense. They allowed a two... They allowed... South Carolina to throw the ball. Uh, Spencer Radler, I believe, is the quarterback there for 256 total yards. Yeah. For 6.1 yards per attempt and one passing touchdown. That's. Yeah, that's not the Georgia defense that we know. That's interesting. They did come away with two interceptions, though, which uh, helped them to seal that game and put it away. Carson Beck had a okay game. He threw for 269 yards with no touchdowns, but he also didn't turn the ball over, which is a plus. They really leaned on their running game yesterday against South Carolina. Uh, Edwards had 118 yards with a rushing touchdown. Bell had 23 rushing yards with a touch rushing touchdown, and Jones had uh, two attempts for 20 yards and a rushing touchdown. So they really definitely leaned on their their rush their running game yesterday, but it was interesting. I did not expect that game to be that close. Yeah, I didn't expect it either. I I did not expect Georgia to trail fourteen to three. Mhm. Mm um, in the first half, but uh, it was it was surprising. Let's jump down to the next game on the docket here: Bowling Green and Michigan. Now, I am a Michigan fan, as you well know. However, I was not pleased with their performance against Bowling Green. Yeah, I was. I wasn't. I was very surprised with their performance because. Uh, I don't know what happened, but it's almost like they forgot to play against Bowling Green. Like they sh they were sleepwalking through the game. They only passed for 143 yards with two passing touchdowns, but J.J. McCarthy threw three interceptions. You can't do that against teams like Penn State, Ohio State, uh, even a team like Maryland or Michigan State. If you turn the ball over three times like that, you're not going to win that game. And they also had a fumble. I'm pretty sure Michigan came out of that game with four turnovers. They had a fumble on a kick return. They had a second fumble on a kick return that they were lucky enough to recover. But they, that was that. That game was just. Uh, yeah, they. Whatever happened to them in that game against Bowling Green, they need to shake it off and and move on because that was horrible. They did not look like the Michigan from the past two weeks. I don't. I don't want to take anything away from Bowling Green. Those kids play with a lot of heart, but there's no way that you should have struggled like that against Bowling Green. That doesn't make any sense. They definitely need to, to go back to the drawing board and figure out you know, what they need to do to fix whatever was going on in that game. They had four total turnovers, and they forced three. Um, but that's not a good play. Hopefully that's a, a one-off for them, but we'll see. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Florida State, Boston College. Florida, now, Florida State really skated out with a win in that one, 31-29. Boston, were, call, go ahead. Yeah, they were, they were lucky that they skated off Boston College because I'm pretty sure they were trail. No. Uh, they were. It was fourteen to ten, no seventeen to ten at the half, and then they scored fourteen in the third, and then Boston College scored thirteen unanswered points in the fourth. Um, so and and they kicked two field goals in the third. So. That's how it was 31 to 29. Boston College really came. Boston College usually has a decent defense, but for their quarterback to throw for 305 yards, 
That's two total touchdowns. That's yeah, just... that's not good. Um, the other thing that came out of that game was Jordan Travis got hurt. Oh. I haven't seen anything about if he's good to go or not. Yeah, I saw. I know they have Clemson next week. So hopefully he's good to go for that game to play against Clemson. We'll see what happens. What were you going to say? Nothing. Oh. Um, Texas, Wyoming. Texas skated out with a win in that one also. That's why I said that this has been the, the weekend of struggling for some of the top teams. Yeah, like Texas. They were struggling. They were it was 10 to 7 at the half. Yeah, and so. then Wyoming came out and tied it up and after in the third quarter and made it 10 to 10. And then they shut Texas down in the third quarter. And then in the fourth quarter, Texas scored 21 and answered points against Wyoming. So that was a pretty tough game for, through three quarters until Texas finally blew it open in the fourth. So, that, again, that's <laughs> – Another game that, that probably shouldn't have been that close for that long, but it was. Yeah. Um, moving on. <clears throat> Notre Dame. And Central Michigan. So it was kind of, it was close at the half. It was 21 to 14. Then Notre Dame kind of shut them down in the second half, only allowed a field goal. And then Notre Dame scored uh, 20 unanswered points in the second half to win that 41-17. But again, like the first half of that game was closer than it should have been. But Notre Dame ended up pulling it out. So uh, I look forward to that matchup next week between them and Ohio State. That should be, as we talked about before, that should be a really good game. And honestly, right now, I think Notre Dame has a really good chance of winning that game because that Notre Dame yeah. defense looks tough. Yeah, it looks really tough. Um, I do think Notre Dame has a good chance of winning that game as well. Uh, it's, it, it just looks like Notre Dame. Uh, my question in that game is going to be the quarterback play of Kyle McCord against a tough Notre Dame defense. Mm -hmm. uh, we all remember the Indiana game. He struggled really a lot in that game. That Notre Dame defense is a lot tougher than that Indiana defense. Yeah. So it's, so it's, it's going to be hard for him, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, I'm not saying Ohio State can't win that game. Yeah. Obviously, they're an elite program. They have been for a while. I just, I'm unsure about that game. You know, in the past, before this season, in the past, the Notre Dame-Ohio State game, you know, we've always picked Ohio State to win those games because you just – they seemed like they were better, you know, that much better than Notre Dame. But this year, it just, so far, through week three, it just doesn't seem like that. It seems like Notre Dame has a real chance to win that game. What do yeah. you think? Yeah, I do think it seems like Notre Dame, Notre Dame has a real uh, chance of winning that game because their defense um, has, as uh, we've seen, their defense – uh, first three games of the season, it's been it's been pretty good, and that's gonna have some trouble for Kyle McCord because uh, he's <clears throat> the defensive line is tough. Yeah, and you know, they can stop the run and get some pressure on the quarterback with a three and four man rush. So <clears throat> that that'll present some problems for Ohio State for sure. Yeah, that'll. Uh... Next game I want to talk about on the docket is. Alabama in South Florida. No, this game. This Seventeen game. to three was the final score, and we went in at halftime tied, three to three. And so, before we dive into this, I just want to say Alabama did bench. Um, Jalen Milrow. Yep, and so they benched him for. Uh, Tyler Buckner and Ty Simpson. And they really never put uh, Milrow into the game, which was surprising because the other two quarterbacks were also struggling. Yeah, they struggled a lot. Like, uh, Tyler Buckner, he, he really struggled. He was 5 for 14 
when they were when they uh when they benched him. I mean, that's yeah, that's I mean, they, that's not what Alabama does. That's not that's not the Alabama team we used to see. That's no, they've been pretty uh pretty split, but evenly split between run and pass the last few years. Like they haven't just leaned on one or the other. And Simpson was 5 for 9 for 73 yards. And Buckner was 5 for 14 for 34 yards. Like, neither quarterback looked great. Yeah, they, they Lucky only completed, for them. They only completed five passes. That's... Yeah, lucky for them. Williams had 129 yards rushing with a touchdown. And Simpson got a, a QB run for a touchdown. Uh, but outside of that... Like they, their offense looked bad. Yeah, it looked horrible. Um, Alabama's got a quarterback problem, clearly through three weeks of this. I mean, you know, week one, a little bit of struggle, fine. Week two, you know, you're getting into the rhythm of your offense, fine. You know, brand new quarterback, freshman, of course, he's going to, you know, take a little time, but man. That they've been through three quarterbacks now, and nothing is clicking for them. That is bad news for Alabama, at least this year. We'll see. Let's see who they play next week. I think they play Ole Miss. Is it Ole Miss? Yeah, I think it's Ole Miss. So, man, they better figure that out, or Ole Miss might beat them because Ole Miss is three and zero up to this point. So, yeah, they gotta figure out their QB problem, or else Ole Miss uh, is gonna really beat them. Just yeah, we'll see what happens there. But man, that's uh, that's tough for Alabama. Usually, you don't see Alabama struggle like that. That uh, that surprised me, and I was interested in why they benched Milrow. I know he struggled in the the Texas game, but. Uh, let's go back and let's check that game out. I thought that he still had a a decent game. I mean, it is what it is, but I mean, he was. Not great, but man, he was better than those others here. Well, yeah, he was. He was at least better than those other two against Texas. I mean, they at least scored 24 points. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, at least you got something. Well, so, Mr. Milrow against Texas, who was a got to be a much better defense than South Florida. Threw for 255 yards and two touchdowns. Yeah, he threw two picks also. Yep. But he also had 44 yards rushing. So, you know, I don't, I mean, I get, I don't, I don't know why they benched him. That's weird. I know Nick Saban did that in the past with Jalen Hurts and Tua Tagle. I just don't, I don't know. That, that worked out. Obviously, Tua was good. But I just don't. They don't have another Tua on the bench, so that's why that that surprised me. They just just let Milrow learn as he goes. But I don't know. That's crazy, man. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, he had two hundred fifty-five yards. Um, that's that's pretty decent against Texas. I'm I'm thinking this might be a down year for Alabama. Yeah, this might be a real down year. So another game I want to talk about is Florida-Tennessee. So I said at the beginning of the season that Tennessee was overrated. And the game yesterday kind of helped me out with that assertion because Florida beat Tennessee 29-16. to That's that's really surprising. I thought Tennessee was going to actually beat Florida, but I did not expect Florida. Not me, buddy. I called it at the beginning of the year. When we did our our talks about the preseason rankings, I told you Tennessee was ranked too high. 
I thought Tennessee uh, is overrated, and so far they've proven to be overrated. Tennessee is just embarrassing. 16 points. That's, <laughs> that is not normal for Tennessee. Tennessee usually at least racks up 20 or more points. And Florida defense stifled them. Oh, yeah, they stifled them good. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> the last game I kind of want to talk about here. Is Colorado, Colorado State. Now, everybody has given Deion Sanders his flowers for, you know, and talking about Shadir Sanders. Yes, they they scored in the fourth quarter. In the second half, they, they tied it up to take it in two overtimes. But I'm not going to take my hat off to Deion today. Today, I am taking my hat off to the Colorado State Rams. Because everybody thought that Colorado was just going to come in and walk all over the Colorado State Rams, you know, after what the, that coach, which if you listen to the whole interview, the coach really wasn't talking that much trash about Dion. He said one thing and the media blew it up out of proportion, but that's beside the point. Everybody, you know, Dion came out and said, oh, it's personal. It's personal. They made it personal. Oh, it's personal. They made it personal. Like, they was just going to come in and stomp all over Colorado State. I'm going to tell you right now, those Colorado State Rams punched Colorado in the mouth. And Colorado didn't know what to do about it. Dion almost wrote a check he couldn't cash. Because Colorado State almost ended his Cinderella first year at Colorado with a huge loss to an unranked team. Yeah, I are they even a- All that trash Dion talked all week long and yesterday during the day on Fox Sports and ESPN and everywhere else about how personal this game was because that coach said something about him and alluded to how his mama raised him and Dion's own mouth running like that. He motivated those Colorado State players and yeah. they came head hunting. And they played tough. My hat is off to Colorado State. I don't care what ESPN or Fox Sports says. My hat is off to Colorado State. Is Colorado State even a Power Five? Team? Yes, they are. <laughs> they are. Uh, but to to come is... in, all those big time recruits Dion got to come into Colorado. He cleaned out that roster and got all these great players in there. And a team like Colorado State came in and punched them in the mouth, and they didn't know what to do about it. I, that's my hat is off to Colorado State. I they were superb in that game. Yes, in the end they lost it in double overtime, but the fact that they owned that game for most of that game. Yeah. Um. That's what impressed me more than Colorado did. Colorado had to go in, and Dion had to give some sort of speech about how they shouldn't be behind at halftime because Colorado State was kicking their butts all over that field. Uh, I just want to bring up that Travis Hunter did get hurt in that game. I mean, okay. Yeah, that's <laughs> still you I'm, should you still you, as, still you should be Colorado that's, State. That, that's one player. I'm not. I'm not as high on Travis Hunter as everybody else is anyway. I I think he's good, don't get me wrong. He's a great player. Yeah, but he's just he's just not a Charles Woodson or uh, uh, Tyron Matthew. He's 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 not those kind of players. He's <clears throat> Colorado State racked up four hundred and ninety nine total yards. Almost with five. a time of possession of thirty four minutes to Colorado's 25. They had 309. Everybody's talking about Shadir Sanders. But Colorado State had 397 total passing yards, where Colorado had 348. And they both had four passing touchdowns. Colorado State had 102 total rushing yards compared to Colorado 70, which means Colorado State defense held Colorado under 70 yards rushing. What killed Colorado State is they ended up having three interceptions and one fumble. 
and Colorado had one interception and one fumble. So four turnovers to two. That's actually still impressive that they had four turnovers and were still in the lead of that game for the majority of that game. Yeah, four turnovers. That's... I'm, I'm sorry everybody can continue to talk about Dion all they want, but Norvell, the head coach of Colorado State, my hat's off to you, man. You want an interview? Call me. I'll give you an interview. I don't care about Deion Sanders. You impressed me more than Deion Sanders did. That's 35 points. That's five. Clearly, the Colorado State coach had them prepared and ready for that Colorado offense. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, Deion. Not this week, buddy. Maybe next week against Oregon or USC. Um, after what Colorado State did to Colorado, I'm ready to see that Oregon game. Cause that Oregon defense is better than Colorado State's defense. So we'll see what Mr. Primetime can cook up next week. But if I were him, I'd probably tone down the trash talking a little bit because that trash talking he did about the Colorado State coach and players – Man, they took that personal. They took that real personal. And you could tell, I don't know if any of you watched the game. I don't know if you watched the game, Clinton, no. but I watched some of the game, and man, those kids took that personal. They wanted to send Deion Sanders and Colorado Buffaloes a message, and I believe that message was received. Yeah, I can't wait to see what Oregon's going to do to Colorado. Start, defense. Start to be another good game. Yep, and then and then they play USC. After that, the rest of the results are kind of what we thought they would be. Uh, <clears throat> next week, we'll see some. Uh, everybody should be starting conference play, so we'll see some good conference games. Yep. Uh, with the exception of a few teams, <clears throat> we'll see how some of those turn out. Is there anything else you want to cover about some of the games from this past weekend, week three? No, nothing else. All right. Well, that will do it for our show today. We hope you enjoyed listening. Uh, if you guys want to leave your comments on your thoughts, please go to our Facebook page, first name Kevin, second name Quentin, and drop a comment on the page. Let us know what you think. Uh, also, we have we're on uh, plat the several platforms for uh, podcasts. So make sure you download us on Spotify, iTunes, uh, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcast. All those just download us, hit like and subscribe if you like our show. Also, we have a YouTube channel, The Common Man's Take on Sports. If you don't like podcasts, please go there and listen to us there and subscribe and like. Um, that's it for today's show. We thank you for listening, and we hope you come back and listen next week.